Everyone knows the classic fizzbuzz coding question. Iterate over numbers, and if the number is divisible by 3, print fizz. If the number is divisible by 5, print buzz. If the number is divisible by 3 and 5, print fizzbuzz. And lastly, if not divisible by 3 or 5, just print the number. There is no one solution to this problem, and this is a solution I wrote in Java in just a few minutes that solves the problem. Nothing special or complex, it gets the job done, but on the other hand, here's a solution that Nate Dev wrote that did this problem in C Sharp, but he does it all in one line of code. Definitely very much more complex and a bit less practical, but a valid and in my opinion very cool solution nonetheless. This got me thinking though. Can we make a valid fizzbuzz solution that is just so cursed it makes you rethink being a developer, but yet still accomplishes the task? Well, that's what I went about doing. I decided to choose my favorite verbose programming language, Java, just to aggravate that demographic off the bat. Next, I started with adding a for loop to iterate over the first 100 numbers, but hang on. A for loop was just a fancy while loop, right? So I rewrote this to utilize a while loop, but hang on. A while loop was just a fancy recursion, right? So I rewrote this to utilize recursion, iterating over the first 100 numbers. Now I have a guard clause here, because it helps you write cleaner code, but we aren't about that right now, so that's gotta change. Ah, much better. This if statement here is also too clean. Let's spruce that up a bit to add that bit of pizzazz we need. Continuing on with the fizzbuzz process, we reach some if-else logic. Writing this using else ifs is just too complex, so let's stick with the tried and true if-else ladder. Modulus operator? What's that? We need a helper method to help us determine if a number is divisible by another number. Remember guys, while loops are just fancy ways to do recursion. I don't like subtraction personally, so let's switch to addition. And you can never be too sure, right? With helper logic complete, we can now move on to printing the correct thing. Printing strings directly? Sounds error prone to me, so let's format them just to be sure. Code looks good, right? Well, not quite, because I was always told magic numbers are bad, so let's make them constants and do the right thing to make our code much more manageable. And there we go, our fizzbuzz implementation is now complete. Looks beautiful, right? So originally I was going to end there, but while writing this code and getting to this final product, I started to notice a trend that I thought I'd bring up because I think it's a really good message. Throughout this whole process, IntelliJ just accepted my code with little complaint. I mean sure it occasionally gave me warnings or suggestions that my code is redundant or could be written better, but for this final code you see here, IntelliJ has zero complaints. I mean sure, I bet there are more strict linting settings you could turn on to catch some of this, but this is just the stock settings that I'm sure a majority of people use, especially when starting out. I mean just look at this line. This is gross and redundant on multiple levels, but IntelliJ sees nothing inherently wrong about it. It did catch me when I attempted to just write a plus negative div saying that the negative bit was redundant, but after I added parens around the negative div, nothing. Those parens magically made this less redundant. Now, okay, okay, I'm not bashing IntelliJ's linter here. There are very real reasons why it doesn't see the redundant code here and it thinks this program is fine, and that's not the point. The point I'm trying to make is that an IDE isn't going to magically make your code the best or necessarily clean. It will try its best, don't get me wrong. But as I've shown here, it's not perfect. And if you try to write your code correctly or incorrectly, but with the wrong limitation or structure, your IDE won't save you. So yes, do try to follow standards and use linters to help make your code clean, but don't take the absence of linter and automated code checking errors and warnings as meaning your code is clean and perfect. At any rate though, that is all I have for you guys today. Hopefully you guys enjoyed, or I guess hated my physical implementation, but I still hope you learned something. Links to both Nate Dev's video short on his C-sharp one-liner implementation and the code for my implementation are linked in the description below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.